Revelation chapter number one. So tonight we're going to do things um, this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a bit of my theme, and then I'm going to share a few points underneath my theme. When I share my theme, um, and then I share the points, we're going to have, I'm going to allow you to have some discussion on that. If you'd like to uh, share something on that, and then um, once we do that. Uh, when we come to a conclusion, I don't want to be long tonight, but what I want to do is present the, uh, tonight's Bible study in such a way that it helps us have a burden that we pray for the lost. I know that we just got done praying and we were petitioning, but I want us tonight to spend time praying for the lost. Part of what, the reason why I feel the way that I do is there is an urgency, uh, you know, the value of souls are so important, and uh, we need to pray for them. The value of those that God has placed around you, and uh, uh, our responsibility to pray for people, to be even in a mindset, to be able to share the gospel with people. Uh, I know that there is so much more caution we have to use than what we did 20, 25 years ago, amen, or even 10 years ago, amen. But caution does not mean that we stop sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. It means that we have the Spirit of God making us wise as serpents and harmless as doves and the Spirit of God working and moving for us. And the other thing is, Last week we talked about baptism. This week we have a baptismal. Um, the, the commission is to go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If we're going to be baptizing people, amen, we've got to see people get saved. And how will they get saved if they don't have a preacher, if they don't hear, amen? And we are the spokesperson, amen, for a lot of souls. God, let us go to the harvest that is white and ready. Lord, let us labor therein. Amen. So, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 1, I want to read two verses, verse number uh, 17 and 18. The Bible says, in John speaking here, he said, I saw him, and I fell uh, uh, at his feet as dead. Speaking of Jesus, amen. And he laid his right hands upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And then this is what I want to focus on, this next phrase. He said, and have the keys of hell and of death. And have the keys of hell and of death. You know, there's nothing any more amazing in this world than freedom. Freedom. Amen. It's a cherished possession. Amen. Freedom. Think of things that tie you down. Sometimes responsibilities tie you down. Sometimes sickness ties you down. Sometimes financial obligations. Things can tie us down. We like freedom. Amen. And so uh, I love that, that, that precious gift of freedom and being able to go. Sometimes we don't have the funds to go. We don't have the resources to go. But oh, thank God when we have the freedom that we're able to go and we can continually travel forward. Amen. Always being free. 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 John on the Isle of Patmos saw Jesus Christ. And he mentioned some things about the Lord. He mentioned that um, he uh, had, had girded about him the keys of hell and of death. You know, the only way anyone will ever backslide is when they leave the Father's hand. 
Amen. No man can pluck us out of the Father's hand. It's choice. God has the keys of freedom. God has the keys of heaven. God has the keys of hell. Amen. He has the ability to give freedom. And so there's something that I realize is that these keys will lock all the unsaved in hell. And it will lock all the saved out of hell. Let's turn to Luke chapter number 16. And I know it's familiar, but there's some things that we can gain here tonight as we look at, at verse number 26. I'll be looking more at the scripture. We'll read it more in depth. Uh, Luke number, chapter number 16. Uh, well, verse number 19. Let me just read this. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fi a fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, saying, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me and Lazarus, and that, that, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for, for I am tortured in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thou good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass, uh, that, that would pass from it to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest uh, send him to my father's house. For I have thought, brethren, that he may testify unto them, and that lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Amen. Verse number seven, uh, verse number uh, 27 there. Uh, I pray therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. Amen. And the word of God says that uh, from hence uh, you cannot. Amen. One thing that's great about being saved is, amen, salvation locks us out of hell. Amen. We think about heaven. It's a wonderful place. Amen. Uh, all that the Bible describes it as the Son of God being the light. Amen. The, 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 the throne and the emerald rainbow. Amen. Jasper Wall, streets of gold, gates of pearl. Amen. This beautiful city. Amen. That God has gone away to prepare for us. How beautiful and wonderful it is for the child of God. Amen. But, but these keys do something else for the child of God. It locks them out of hell. But if one would come, let him get his finger and come. Lock out hell. These keys not only locks the saved out of hell, but they lock all the enemies of Christ in hell. Not only was it impossible for the rich man to have just a drop of water on his tongue. But no one can help God and share the gospel with anyone else. Sometimes when I preach on this on Sunday morning because I feel it's beautiful for me out. Sometimes we're full of grace and mercy and love and God is all of that. But God is also a God of backbone. And what He says establishes he needs. He holds the keys of death and of hell. These keys lock the lost 
into a place of darkness, fire, unrest, captivity. And so with that in mind, I want to just think about this thought. It may challenge us to live righteous, but may it also challenge us to have compassion, making a difference for the Because in hell, their people never go free of sin. What an amazing thing it is to experience the grace and peace and the power of God. Where we kneel down and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. There's not guilt any longer. There's not that struggle of sin and, 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 and stain of sin in our life. In Numbers 32, verse number 23, the Bible says, But if thou wilt not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sins will find you out. Do you remember, or maybe you know, and you think of someone that lives in that tragic place and where their sins forever haunt them and they're after them. Remember what it was like before you got saved and how that sin haunted the corners of your mind and your life. Maybe there was something that, that, that you did uh, and uh, the burden that was upon your soul and maybe you thought, if I die, I'm going to die in the hell. What a terrible thought that is to think that I go to hell. A burden of sin. No release, no freedom from sin. And I want you to imagine that for every lost soul that is in hell, there is no release from the burden and the bondage of sin. It is there. They are dying. They remember it. They live with the anguish of it day in and day out. And so they never go free from sin. Can you imagine living with the burden on your mind that every minute of every day, amen, every minute of eternity, every second of eternity, even though we're living beyond the hands of time, but in every second there, there is no hope, amen, there is, there is no relief, it is a pitiful place, and yes, it's sad to think about, but oh yes, it's true, that is what hell is like, there is no freedom from sin. Sin binds, sin gives disease, sin gives heartache, sin gives sorrow. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there in that place, there is never, ever, ever freedom from sin. God help us. God help us. When there's my family who I love, there's associates who I dearly love. Amen. I don't want to think of the thought of them going to hell where there's never a freedom from sin. May we carry the burden. May we pray. May our lives make a difference. May we bombard heaven realizing that the very keys that will keep us in heaven are the same keys that will keep the sinner in hell. God, help us tonight to be burdened. If we don't pray, who will? If we don't reach out, who will? God, help us tonight. On that same line of thought, not only is there never freedom from sin, but there's never freedom from the shame of sin. In Daniel 12, 2, the Bible says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Can you imagine the shame that goes with living in hell. And they're locked there. There's never freedom. Amen. Never freedom. And one will be ashamed of the corrupt life that they live. Amen. One will be ashamed of their condition before God. Can you imagine? And here, in, 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 and I don't want to get ahead of myself, uh, in, in this world, amen, there is hope for freedom. But it, when, when Christ turns the key and they are locked in hell for eternity, 
There is no hope or help. Amen. There is shame to be lived out for all of eternity. The calamity of wasted years. The shame that goes with that. Amen. No matter who it is. Amen. Shame comes to every person in the land. Amen. There's moans and there's groans from shame. There's never, and I told you I was going to stop, but I just feel like going on. There's never freedom from sorrow. Matthew 13, 42 says, And they shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be what wailing and gnashing of teeth. You know, I've, I've seen people before. I've seen folks before who are sorrowful. I've seen people come to the altar and they've said with sorrow and tears to go. I've sat with those that are dying and they've cried because of a lifetime that was wasted. Not serving God, not living the way that they should be sorrow. But could you imagine knowing that in eternity there's no freedom from that? Christ is freedom. His blood. Amen. As long as there is life, there is hope. Right. But once life is gone, the hope of freedom from sorrow is gone. I sat with a man not long ago who was dying. Tears running down his face. He was begging to live. He wanted to live because he had spent his life being a father who was not connected to his children. He was he, he, he lived as an alcoholic. He lived uh, just moving from one woman to another, children uh, just uh, 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 just illegitimately born that he wouldn't take care of. And he, he came to the place in his life where he wanted relationship with his children and he apologized and got it. But you know what? He was dying and he was dying in sorrow because of the life that was lived. But Christ can give hope and freedom from that, that there's hope and eternity that they can ever be together. But without Christ, there is no freedom from sorrow. And once that final breath is gone, there's no freedom from the sorrow. In hell, there will be sorrow for every Christian that's been mocked. Amen. There will be sorrow for every Christian that's been slandered. Sometimes we may think in our life as to live righteously. People sometimes misunderstand, sometimes they slander us. Amen. But I need to tell you that there'll be some folks in hell that will never know freedom. They will live the slander that they gave to the people of God. No freedom. There will be sorrow for everyone that ever criticized Jesus Christ. There will be sorrow for the one who is unrepentant of his work against the church. Amen. There is sorrow for everyone who spurned an invitation to come and know Jesus as their Savior. There is sorrow, and not sorrow that lasts for a season, but sorrow that lasts throughout all eternity. I want you to know that He holds the keys. Amen. And God is a God of love, and God is a God of grace, but God is a God of justice and righteousness. And when men choose to, to, to spurn Him, to reject reject him, then the choice is that he holds the key that one day they will be locked in this place of everlasting sorrow where there's no freedom from sorrow, where there's no freedom from guilt, where there's no freedom from sin. I want you to imagine tonight with me what it would be like before you were saved to never experience the freedom from sin. Amen. Thank God for victory over sin. We experience freedom, but in hell they don't. I want you to imagine the guilt of sin. And maybe your sin wasn't even that great. But when the Holy Ghost came by and convicted you, you knew that you were guilty as charged. And you needed someone, amen, that would pay the price for the penalty of your sin. And you found it in Jesus Christ. There was freedom. But before freedom, I didn't feel it. And then I want you to imagine that worst sorrow that you ever felt. Amen. Most of you in here have lived a life that you felt the depth of sorrow, the grief where the waves of billow roll in your soul. But you knew, amen, that Christ was your comforter. 
and today he has delivered you because he is the comforter and the deliverer. But in hell, there's no freedom from sorrow. God help us. In verse number 23 of chapter number 16, in hell he lifted up his eyes. He sees. In verse number 24, he cries. He speaks. In verse number 24, he also can taste, dip the finger in the water and put on my tongue. I can taste it. And in verse number 25, he remembers, he remembers his brother. In verse number 26, he hears. So he sees, he hears, he remembers all these senses that he has are there and they're acute. Did you ever meet someone before that they're so, so guilt-ridden by sin? That they're doing whatever they can do to get away from this sense of sin. The sense is being touched by the sinful state. Sometimes people turn music up so loud that that's all they can hear. They can't even hear their own mind thinking. So they get all those voices of the conscience and the Holy Ghost they try to get rid of. You ever see folks, they'll drown themselves in alcohol because they're trying to get away. Or they'll shoot up trying to get away. Amen. They'll do whatever they can. They'll sleep. They'll entertain themselves. They'll eat. They'll pleasure themselves. But in hell, there is nothing to get away from the senses that you are lost and you are dying and you realize that you are far from God. There's no getting away from it. Amen. Their senses are there. Amen. If it were possible, people would go stark raving mad. But guess what? In hell, they can't. As, as, as long as there's a heaven, there is also a hell. And as long as eternity holds, people will suffer. I comfort myself many days with knowing that I'm just a pilgrim traveling through. One day these trials are going to be gone. Temptation's going to be gone. Sorrow's going to be gone. The heartache this side of eternity is going to be gone. I remember that all throughout eternity will be with Jesus Christ. To be whole by sin. But as long as eternity is for me, it's as long as eternity is in hell for those who are lost. Some folks may think that I'll be away from Satan. But in hell, you're not away from him. Revelation 20, verse number 10 says that the devil and those that deceived were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That they could be tormented day and night. There's no getting away from the devil. He's there. He hates souls. He hates humanity. He hates the very creation that was formed in the image of God. And so, there those are burning in with the very enemy, the 
for the seed of their soul to go there. Their people never go free. Never go free. There's not separation. But they're there for all of eternity. In Matthew 23, verse 22, verse number 13, then the king, they said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That thought of binding, that's exactly what hell is. A place where there's no Forever separated from the Lord, from that new city, from the saints of God, and from all the blessings of God. Eternity in hell. Tonight it's easy to be caught up with all the blessings of serving God. Sometimes we forget that there's a world that's dying in the hell. Whoever is there. If there's anything I want for my girls, I want them to experience the freedom to do whatever that they want to do to disguise the world. The greatest freedom I can offer them is Jesus Christ. Amen. For any of us in our families, the greatest thing that we can offer them is Jesus Christ. Listen, we live in a world where there is so much compromise so much compromise from the pulpit. So much that is preached that is acceptable and is contrary to the word of God and its sin. We need to be praying for our loved ones. Brothers, sisters, parents, children, grandchildren. Because he holds the keys. And this God who gives us freedom of heaven also holds the key to walk in hell. Tonight I don't want to challenge us. I don't know who the Lord may be laying upon your heart, but I want us to come and pray. Life gets busy with schedules. Life gets busy with things that we're obligated with. And tonight I have an intention tried to give us a safe enough time where we can come when we can pray. Could you pray? Two things. God, give me a realization that there's no freedom in hell and help me preach the message to everybody I know. God, work it. Number two, God, save my life. Because I want them to have the freedom of heaven, not the bondage of heaven. Amen. Would you gather in tonight? Amen. Everybody in the world, let's gather in. Let's go to God in prayer.